There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Shall we give him a clap of it? I'm not going to come and say anything. I'm getting straight to the preaching. So, uh, only I will tell you, I will leave for Bolivia on Wednesday. So, if you pray for me when I'm over there, come back in October sometime. I don't remember the date. September. Yeah. It's October. So, I need prayer there, and I have a wish there that we will have more like outdoor. Uh, out of revival kind of things because they used to be, they used me a lot to teach in that so because that's what people think but I want to have more of that other than that should so yeah when I'm saying using the expression the church now I'm not thinking particularly about this church here I'm talking about the body of Christ you understand so what I'm going to share is about righteousness and right standing and it's about the problem with sin consciousness. That is a big problem. It's present all over the world. So I'm not going back to Adam when he sinned. We know that. Yes, I don't need to explain that. So, if you look, at, I've been saved since 1971, December 1971. So, and I've been in different contexts here, and different uh, situations. And what I'm going to preach, teach now, about righteousness and right standing, it took several years before I knew it. I didn't know it. I knew that by the blood of Jesus before the Father, we were justified legal. I know that. But this thing here with righteousness is much deeper than that. It, it goes, goes deeper. So, uh, what I've seen through the years is that in the church, we've been very strong teaching three things. That is our need of righteousness. That is why I won't help you. And then our weakness. It's fine to know, but it won't help you. And then our inability to please God. That is fine to know, but it doesn't help us. So, what is the problem? What is the solution here? The first step here is to understand righteousness and righteousness before the Father. So, I'm going to use... Uh, you have it there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. On the board. Okay. So... Uh, Romans 8, 33 to 34, and I'm using the Amplified Bible because that explains it very well. So there we can see that uh, Romans 8, 33 to 34, I want to just comment that there's a big problem in condemnation because condemnation is not by God. There's no by God. We're talking about condemnation now. Not that the Lord show or something, that's different, but condemnation. Because that brings guilt. Let's say that you struggle, you have a fight with the enemy, and then something comes, you have a condemnation there. And condemnation can come from the preaching. And there's a lot of condemnation of preaching. That is Old Testament preaching that's coming to the church. It's mixed. And it's, it's a consequence of lack of revelation. I'll, I'll explain it to you. So, uh, from Romans 8, 33, 33 <laughs> my Norwegian tongue kicks in there. 33, to 34, Amplified Bible. Uh, here it says, Who will bring any charge against <coughs> God's elect? His chosen ones. God's elect, His chosen ones, as if everybody who is saved, who has Jesus in their heart, and who will be saved in the future. Yeah? So a charge here, that is like, like um, uh, it's like an accusation, same as an accusation, basically. So, what he says, it is God who justifies. So, that means that there could be things in our lives that gives a basis for bringing charge against us. And there was. <coughs> if not, we wouldn't be, you know, if there wasn't a solution that we wouldn't be saved to it. Because before you were a Christian, there were a lot of things that was like bringing, gave a basis for bringing charge against us. But then Jesus died for those things. So, that, and when that happens after we are saved, there might be things that brings a legal basis for charge against us. But Jesus died for those things. So, that's why the legal basis falls away. So, who will bring any charge against God's elect? This is so important to understand because when you deal with enemy, 
Your conscience needs to be secure. You need to be strong. You need to be clean. You're conscious. You understand that? You get me? Mm -hmm. So if you fall in the ditch in the sewage, <laughs> you need to be watched. Washed. Yeah? You understand mm -hmm. that? But you're not supposed to fall all the time in the sewage. Open and wash again. You understand? You can't live in the sewage. You understand that? So, so who will bring any charge against God's elect? His chosen ones. Question mark. Then he says, it is God who justifies. You see that? So, because God has justified us from all these charges that had a legal basis, then they lost their legal, legal, legal requirement, legal basis. They lost it. So, that brings in the, 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 just, the, the expression justification and being justified. So, that is a legal thing. You understand that? Justification being justified, that is a legal thing. Yeah? So, justifies, that means declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with himself. That was what God did through Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross, when Jesus shed his blood, and he brought the blood before the eyes of the Father. Then God, he now, now he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Because if we look at our lives now, in the future, even things we are not aware of, there are bases for the enemy, you understand that? There are bases for God's judgment. But because Jesus sprinkled the blood, now he says, because of the blood, I see the blood, I will pass over you. You understand? It was the angel of death. So there is a spiritual death as well. You understand that? Trying to attack us and trying to drag us down. So now it has lost its right, legally. So who justifies us? That is declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with himself. I want you to confess after me. And please put your heart, your emotion, your spirit into confession. And you might lift your right hand. That's a sign of authority. So you repeat after me. God has justified me. God has justified me. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Through His blood. Through His blood. God has declared me. God has declared me. Blameless. Blameless. And the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus has put me. Has put me in a right relationship. In a right relationship with God the Father. With God the Father. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we continue. Who? is the one to condemn us. Christ Jesus is the one. Is it? Can you see what it says? That who is the one who condemns us? Who is the one? That's the question mark. And what is the answer? If you read here, who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one, is it? Could be, but he doesn't. It could be the enemy, but he can't. Why? Because Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty. And this is the penalty for future sins as well. Because when you came to Christ first time, you received forgiveness of all the sins you have done, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you had a good conscience. I remember the first, I'm not going into that, but the first weeks after I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I was like, going up there, I wasn't aware I was sinning at all. And it was like that, you know. Didn't you? But I was just so, my deepest part of my spirit was so released, so happy, so satisfied because I had all, all forgive, all sins I had given up to that. But then there was a problem, started a problem. It took many, many years before I could see, understand the solution to it. And that is, what about after you say? I'm not saying this so you know, you can just not sin after you say. You understand that? So, but, but, you will not be able to live without sinning in one way, way or form or degree from your saying until you, you know that, until you, you go to heaven. And we do a lot of things we're not aware of as well. So, what about those sins that happens after we are born again? And it's not always big sins, it's just that you're talking with somebody and discussing with them and then you answer back on kind, you know? And you feel that this was too hard, no. But it's many things that have happened partially subconscious, and it's there, it's there, but not so strong. So that things like that, we need, we need forgiveness for that as well. And that it's provided for us. So that means that we need to be justified <coughs> legally from past, present, and future sins. Mm -hmm. Conscious, subconscious, and unconscious sin, all of it. Mm -hmm. And that is done through Christ Jesus. Amen. So 
Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay a penalty. And more than that, who was raised from the dead. And who is at the right hand of God interceding with the Father for us. That means that Jesus, he, come, he came to this earth and he fulfilled the Lord, the Ten Commandments, only one who's ever done it. Hundred percent. And then, now, he, and he died for our sins and he justified us. So now he is at the right hand of the Father as our justification, as our righteousness, our guarantee. He is there, and what does that tell when the Father is? He tells us, this is the one who died for the sins. He is the one who took the punishment. And you know, you can't, it's called double jeopardy in legal terms. You cannot judge the same, or have judgment on the same thing, the same sin twice. It's not, not possible. I'm not going to that direction, I'm just mentioning. So when you get sick, it's not punishment for your sins. Mm -hmm. If you're troubled with your economy, it's not punishment for your sins. Of course, we can do stupid things that yeah. causes it. Yeah. And the enemy, he comes to trick us. You understand? That's another matter. Yeah. So, so here it says, and then now we have the first expression, justified. That's illegal, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that is quite strong, and it becomes stronger and stronger. Because there's something more here than I've been teaching so much about before. So here it says, uh, 833 Aramaic Bible. Can you see that? And you see what they have the subtitle there. It says, Declared righteous and no accusation. The first one is declared justified by justified and there's no condemnation. And here it says, Who shall accuse the elect of God? God is He who declares righteous. Can you see that? To be declared righteous is more than being justified. That is to be declared as a person who walks in righteousness, who expresses righteousness. That's to be declared as a person that is righteous. You understand? That? So we are not only justified, but we are declared as a person who is walking in righteousness. Yeah? So, who shall accuse the elect of God? God is he who declares righteous. And the enemy, you can read about that in look up later, um, Revelation 12. Then he says that the accuser of the brethren is cast down, mm -hmm. the one who accused them day and night, and that overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of the mm -hmm. testimony, mm -hmm. so on. And again, there's a hidden blood of the life into death. So, that means that because we are declared as righteous persons, we are declared as persons of walking in righteousness, Mm -hmm. That's why the enemy, the accuser, has lost his right. Amen. You understand that? Because we could be justified before the Father. But what about a walk? Now we declare as someone who walks in righteousness. We are declared righteous, you understand? Amen. So, uh, we are also made righteous. And the next headline is, oh, super, I don't know what you put it. Made Righteous and no accusation. Romans 8 and this is from the 1930 Norwegian Bible. It was actually the first Norwegian Bible that existed, the previous ones were Danish. So here it says, Who will accuse God's elect? It is God who makes righteous. Makes righteous. To be made righteous is not the same as being made holy. To be justified is not the same as being sanctified. Because the justification is perfect, it can't be better. You can't 100% justified, but when it comes to sanctification, being made holy, that is gradually an experience inside here. That's going on as long as we are alive. So don't mix it up. Because people mix up sanctification and holiness with righteousness and justification. So when they're talking, they use the word right. Uh, they, they, they use the word righteousness, and uh, well, they actually mean sanctification and holiness. So that creates confusion. So we must be clear. So, uh, who will accuse God's elect? It is God who makes righteous. Did you know that God made you righteous? And because of that, you can't be accused. You can't accuse the person that is righteous. This is more than being justified. Because when you are born again, this is so important to understand. Well, I was, yeah, I was born, I met, somebody testified to me about Jesus. In December, 
November, I can't remember now, December 1971. There was a girl there, she was trying to get my friend to become Christian or something like that. So, and then I was in this discussion, like a quarrel with her. I believe in all these things about yoga and far east kind of things and mixed with the violin, you know. So, I don't know how that is. I, I could see her tears here. Yeah. And then, but whatever I said, she said to me, just receive, because I couldn't understand this thing here. You're saved by faith, that's great. But then, of course, you have to repent. But then, it's not the grace, you have to do something. So I was confused concerning this completely, because I didn't see the solution there. I mixed up. Because you have many churches that, like, like, like I don't want to mention the denomination, but many churches, just people are born into the churches. So they hear about, when you have the communion, by the blood there is forgiveness, justification, you know, and then they're not born again. You understand? You understand? And then you have the other ones who doesn't understand that salvation is by grace, and then say, you've got to repent, you've got to repent, you put yourself together, stop smoking, stop drinking, and you can be saved. You know you can stop drinking, stop smoking, but you can be saved. Yeah. yeah. So, here. So, but now, what happened was that when Jesus rose from the dead, he is the wheat, the crop, who fell to the ground, so that became many. Yeah. Mm. So when he died, he produced us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So Jesus, he died in the flesh, but was made alive in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And he was declared righteous in spirit, Jesus mm -hmm. alone. So what happened was that out of his resurrection, we, he produced a righteous new creation without spot or wrinkle, holy, perfect, complete, that was produced out of his resurrection. And this is how you were born again. Amen. Can you understand that? I can't understand it, but I, I, I know it. <laughs> so, this is how he made us righteous. Can you understand that? You are born righteous. Like I said the other day, the only way to become a dog is to be born a dog. Mm -hmm. The only way to become a human being is to be born a human being. There's no other way. Mm -hmm. So, the problem is that we are all born sinners. This is the big problem. So, the only way to become righteous was to be born again. Mm -hmm. Be born righteous. So, we are born righteous. So, what is happening is that we were born again. God gave us a righteous nature, new nature. Mm -hmm. So, because of that righteous nature, you have, you have a position before the Father. Mm -hmm. You come as a righteous new creation before God. Mm -hmm. That is more than you're forgiven your sins. That is more than being justified from sins. This is stronger. So, who will accuse God's elect? It is God who makes righteous. So, because you are born righteous, you are born perfect, you know a baby doesn't have any past. You know that? Doesn't have any past. So when you receive Jesus, all your past were removed completely. He can't come back to you. Nothing that you did was before you were saved can come and accuse you now. Nothing. Nothing. It's, it's all gone. So, right standing and no accusation. Romans 8, 23, from New Living Translation. Who dares? <laughs> Do you see that? Who dares? Because there's somebody who tries. The devil, he tries. Mm -hmm. And human beings, they try. Yes. Yeah? And sometimes the teaching and preaching come out wrong. So I've seen it happening that through the years. When the preaching is in a way that it always makes people unsecure of their salvation as a way to motivate them. It's not me. So we know our position of authority in Christ Jesus. But when the preaching comes in a way that it makes you unsure and unsecure about the authority, when that is used as a motivation to work more for the Lord, to do more for Him, that is wrong. <laughs> because it, you know it's like you have a boat, you try to take out the water and you take out the plug. You understand? So to get the water out. It's only comes in. And it, then it goes a step further, and there is sometimes people that preach. You know, we have a right standing, justification by the blood of Jesus, that's guaranteed. But sometimes the preaching is like, it used to make sure all people always unsure about their right standing, about the blood, before they make them sure, just to motivate them. And it doesn't work. This is Old Testament. That is what it is to be under the law. It's always like that. It makes you secure. And then the preaching goes like makes you always unsure about your salvation as a way to motivate you. You get me? So that is not very healthy. 
And for many years, I experienced some of that. But the background I have grew up spiritually, not 100%, but it was too much of it in that direction. And there was a lot of things we didn't know that the body of Christ know today. When we went to the church, you know that was about Jesus is coming, are you ready? Jesus is coming, are you ready? Jesus is coming, are you ready? Are you sure you are ready? What about... So now you've got to go down, there was a basement there, down there and consecrate yourself and give yourself to the Lord again. And it's over and over the same thing. And you know as the week goes by, you depend to not be perfect. And, and then you come back the same thing over again. Uh, and I even remember, I can understand. You know, I had long hair, that was fashion. Down here, you know, I didn't look like I do now. It's like a skinny, right? <laughs> you know. And then, the thing is that... The, I say it. <laughs> the thing is that a lot of the... A lot of, not all of them, but many of the people from the church, who have grown up in the church, they didn't speak in tongues. And then me and my friends, we came from, you know, from a completely other environment, and we spoke in tongues, like this, you know. Um, because we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit easily. Because these are the, they had to go through this, two, they went through this, and this, and wait, and so we grasped it reasonably quickly. Um, but they had problem. The grasp. So, and then there was a missionary from, he's been in the jungle of South America somewhere, two periods, maybe eight years, I don't know. And he's, and it's at that time we had a hippie movement, which was people who were smoking marijuana and things like that, living in the same house and travel around the world to India, and, you know, all these things. There. And they had long hair, you know. And then they broke out a revival. We partially come from that revival. Broke out a revival all over the world. So when he came to the airport, I think it was Miami or something, he saw all these people with long hair looking at them with a Bible here. Yeah. He didn't like it. <laughs> so when he, came to, when he came to the church and preaching, he was so radical. So he preached, I would say, he preached against long hair, he had to cut her hair, blah, 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 blah. And I was a new Christian, so I got offended and I ran out like this, you know, out on the street with Greta, remember? <laughs> Like that. So I've been there. Oh my God! Yeah, I've been there. So I understand his background. I understand it very well. But you know, we have all this thing with consecration, but not a solution. They didn't teach or preach about the victory of Christ. They didn't teach about the new creation. That we were new creation. They were teaching that. Well, what did what was into it? So with my friends, we started looking around. We started getting some literature from Denmark, from the United States, some translations. And then we started to understand this thing. And also, I had like a suppression, oppression, I don't know what you call it, like desperation, not that, something like that. I had for many, many years. And then I read a book of T.L. Lossborn, another book, and I understood this is a spirit, it has to be handled as a spirit. And in that book of T.L. Lossborn, I think it was, then it says, you just speak to the spirit like this, and tell him, do, 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 and go. And I was sitting in the bedroom. Or my parents. I was sitting on the bed there, and then I just spoke to this spirit like this and go in the name of Jesus Christ and phew, I felt that something was taken out of me, concise. Completely uh, concise. So then we started to understand, and then I understand we read about the blood of Jesus, how you could use the blood by resisting the devil and declare the blood like that. But at that time I didn't know that we were seated in the heavenly Christ. And the animals put on under your feet. We didn't have any teaching about it except to find in some books. And then, after some while, I discovered that that was a stronger, that was a stronger revelation of just knowing the blood, using the blood. Because now you know when you're seated in the heavens, the animals under your feet. You know that there's a strongest position of authority. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Romans, where was that? Who dares? Who dares accuse us, whom God has chosen? For his own. No one. Why? For God himself has given us right standing with himself. So today you are standing before God. You are before God with a right standing. And you could, no one is ever capable of putting themselves in the right standing with God. So God did it through Jesus Christ. Jesus did it. You understand? Put in the right standing. So this is your standing Towards God today, it is right. It's nothing wrong with it. It's right. Not because of our experience, because of what we are and do, but because of what Jesus did. Amen. It's right. And because He has made us new creations by nature. 
with a righteous new nature, as we just mentioned. Second Corinthians 3 9, Amplified Bible. And here is to, to, it's important to understand these two ministries because I've experienced the ministry of condemnation. Um, I've experienced both and I've experienced the mixed. Many places, many different situations, and so on. So here it says, for if the ministry that brings condemnation, that is the old with Moses, yeah? The old covenant in law has glory. Did you hear that? It has glory. So even today, when, you, when, when people are preaching, on this basis, it can still have glory. People can still get saved. You understand that? Because I heard a preacher was taken from the 60s, a very good preacher, miracle preacher, and he was preaching about, you know, when he says the curses and the blessings in the, the Genesis. And he was preaching like that, you know, like, if I'd been there, I'd been running on fair. The way he was preaching it, and he used, and people get saved there, you understand? That? Because they understand. But it's, it has some glory, but it's not, it's not a uh, pastel. So, and here it says, well, if the ministry that brings condemnation, the old corner of the law, has glory, how much more does glory overflow in the ministry that brings righteousness? That, what does that mean? What does it mean righteousness here? This, the new covenant which declares believers free of guilt and sets them apart for God's special purpose. So that means that there is a ministry of reconciliation, of just, justice, of justification. There is a ministry that, that declares the believer free from guilt and sets them right with God. That's the ministry, that's the ministry of righteousness. It's talking about that. The ministry of, that brings righteousness. Yeah? So be aware of the word righteousness. So, I'll go to the next Bible verse. See that? Yeah, yeah international standard version. For if the ministry of condemnation, can you hear that? So there is a ministry, because people can be filled with the Holy Spirit, can live near to the Lord, but at the same time preaching on the principle of the Old Testament. Preach, that is bringing the church in under condemnation, instead of setting them free. You understand that? If you teach people just to continue sinning, you're not definitely not setting them free. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with that at all. But, you, but we can preach people under condemnation, so they start, like I mentioned, like, they start feeling insecure. But if the ministry of condemnation is glory, then the ministry of justification. You understand that? That's an overwhelming glory. So that's the new covenant's principle is the ministry of justification. There are two pulpits. There's the pulpit of Moses from Sinai, and there's the pulpit from Golgotha of Jesus. There's two. And if you read Galatians, you can see that the Apostle Paul, he's furious, taking, uh, take this, because they're mixed in the Old Testament with the New Testament. So, I recommend you read Galatians, the background of that. So, uh, Romans 8, 1, Amplified Bible, Therefore there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in Him as personal Lord and Savior. Amen. You see that? That's not good? So that means that the Bible declares that no one can condemn us. Amen. And there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that means that if you come under condemnation, it's not of God. Mm. You understand? There's another thing that when the Holy Spirit shows us something that needs to be changed, that's a diff completely different matter. Yeah. And if I mean to somebody, you feel bad afterwards. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, if I'm too, too mean and slap somebody or go and scare them so they get nervous, and you know, then you feel that that is not a matter. That's not what you're talking about. So, and that therefore there is now no condemnation. Focus on what the believer is in Christ. And who the believer is in Christ. Amen. And further on, that all that Christ did for us is available to us now. Amen. It is ours to enter into and enjoy now. Amen. Because when people read about the miracles, the signs, the results, the fruits in the Bible, and, and the authority, and are standing, mm -hmm. they think that first we need to do this. Mm -hmm. First, we need, because it's not available yet, because we need to do this, we need to do this. And I know, I've been from the previous revivals. They still think they have to wait for the Holy Spirit. They didn't know anything there, but they think, oh, it's many years we had waiting meetings, you know, tarry meetings. Mm -hmm. 
You don't need to tarry for the Holy Spirit. It's a misconception. You don't need to. You can receive now, like that. But you can receive by waiting. It happens. And so, so uh, 1 Corinthians 1.30, Amplified Bible. Is it there? Yeah. But it is from Him, that's the Father, that you are in Christ Jesus. Because I had this problem myself. I knew that you had to be in Christ Jesus. So, I didn't know that I was in Christ Jesus. So I was wondering how I could be in Christ Jesus, or come into Christ Jesus. I was wondering that, until I read this Bible was here. And it says in the, in the I think King James, and the Norwegian Bible, it says, it says, by Him, or through Him, you are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is something that the Father did. He put us in Christ Jesus. When you are born again, you have like a branch, don't mix it with the olive tree, that is something else, I have to do with a completely another concept, I think that. But the tree, the vine tree, the, we have grapes, yeah, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. So, we were the branches, so he, he engrafted them into us, yeah. And you know the English Bible, King James, they use the expression adoption. So in one sense, that, in one sense that is good because we were outside the family. Not like the Jewish that were inside, but we were outside, so, and we were engrafted in. But the Norwegian Bible, which goes back to Martin Luther, Reformator, doesn't I never use the word adoption. And you know why? Because we are biologically God's children. Amen. You understand that? So you don't find adoption in the Norwegian Bible. So first time I read it, what is this? So, but it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, Revealing his plan of salvation and righteousness, making us acceptable to God. So now you have become acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Not if you look at you, if I look at myself, then there's no there's things here that's not perfect. So I'm not acceptable that way. And not through psychology, because there's a lot of psychology that's healthy psychology that try to, to, to solve the problem with sin consciousness and so on. But in Christ Jesus, because of what He did, Amen. that so we you are acceptable to God in Him and through Him. When you have become the righteousness of God, you should be acceptable, shouldn't you? That's quite acceptable. So and sanctification that is making us holy and setting us apart for God, and redemption, providing a ransom from the penalty of sin. So what you see in this Bible verse is that we are in Christ Jesus, and He has become us righteousness. You, you see that? So now you are in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1 30, second part, and the Bible says like this, whom God made our wisdom from God, revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden, manifests itself as our righteousness. That is, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God. You see that? So through this justification, being declared righteous, being made righteous, being born again righteous, now we have been put into right standing with God. So not only do you have right standing or basis of justification, but you have right standing because you are born righteous. As a righteous new creation, you have a right standing. And this is a challenge to us as well, because we are not only justified, but we receive a righteous nature, then it's a challenge to us, there's no excuse, we not walking in the spirit. Not walking in the spirit. You understand that? So, by God the Father, we are in Christ. It is God who placed us there. Don't try to take that job away from me, because I tried it and it didn't work. Now he's done it. So no, he's done it anyway. So it's already happened. But the thing here is revelation. Lots of believers they don't know that they are in Christ Jesus, and they try to become into Christ Jesus. Mm. But when you got the revelation, that's it. Then it starts manifesting fully. So Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Have you got it there? Yeah. Boldness. It is time we start coming before God with boldness. Amen. And you dare to come with boldness. Mm -hmm. So everything that is contradictory to boldness, when you come from God, even if it's my preaching, throw it away. Amen. If you read the book or see it on TV, switch it off. It's not everything that preaching on TV is good. Sometimes I switch up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm emphasizing too much now. So, 
having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's the blood that gives us, gives us a basis for boldness. And when you understand what the blood means, what it has done, and what it is for us now, then it makes your conscience bold and strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And the blood is always available. Did you know that? Because in the Old Testament, they had female and male uh, sacrifices. So Jesus is a lamb, is used, that is a male, so he died like that, that has to be the legal thing very much. But in the Bible, when you use the feminine, it has to do with experience, not the legal thing, but with experience and emotion. So, there was a cow, a red heifer, you know what a heifer is? It's a young cow. It's a red heifer, and that had to be burned together with the blood. And then it was mixed together with the water of cleansing. Yeah? And then what found you? You found the ashes. And ashes, they can't decay. Of course, there's no oxygen in it. They can't decay. And in these ashes were the blood. And that was available for the future. That is why the blood of Jesus cleanses us now. Now. But it says, if you walk in the light, as is the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin or every sin. The, the grammar there means that it's still clearer in the Greek. But it should, you should understand what English is about. It, mean, it doesn't mean that it has the power to do so, but it means that it is doing it now continuously, without stopping. And we wouldn't do that if there wasn't a need for it. So if we were perfect, we didn't need it. So, but it is there. So that means that when God sees the blood, He sees you without sin. Can you get that? Amen. Because sometimes we think that, yeah, there's a lot of sin, but Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers it. Mm, that is the weak. It's not exactly, it doesn't exactly work. It. it means that the blood of Jesus constantly takes it away, Amen. washes it away. That means that you, by the blood of Jesus, stand before God the Father without sin, without sin nature, without past, without present, Amen. through the blood of Jesus. That is what it means. So, having therefore, brother, and boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And we of New Testament, since then, brethren, we have free access to the holy place through the blood of Jesus. Amen. You know something, I know that things that follow the ministry, that follow the apostle and so on, I know very well that. And things that transfer by laying on our hands. And I have some preaching there, but I want the foundation first. Uh, so, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Right? Yeah, we have, yeah, we have free access and no free access. <laughs> so, something will drop my mind. So we have free access to go into the holy place. Mm. So we are already in Christ Amen. because God has placed us there. And Christ has become our righteousness, mm. our right standing. Yeah? And because we are in Him who has become our righteousness, we have now become the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. And Christ is the righteousness. We are in Christ. Consequently, we have become the righteousness of God in Him. So, 2 Corinthians 5.21 He, that's the Father, made Christ, who knew no sin, judicially, be sin on our behalf. That means, when he says, it means judicially he be, became sin. So, why it says judicially here, is to point out that he didn't have sin nature. He didn't have the lust of sin in him, even if he was made sin. That's why it says judicially here. Mm -hmm. So, the teaching that Jesus had sin nature is wrong. He didn't have sin nature. It's, it's not correct. So, he made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf, so that in Him we will become the righteousness of God. You can't be more righteous than the righteousness of God, can you? <laughs> so that means you can't be more righteous in the future than you are now. Did you know that? Amen. You can't have a better right stand in the future than you have now. Amen. So because Christ is your study, He is your righteousness, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And I'll ask you a question. This is a trap, first of all. This is a trap, probably. Will you be more holy when you come to heaven? Yeah. Yes, you will. You will. But will you become more righteous when you come to heaven? No. no. There's a difference here. Because holiness and perfection has more to do with our experience. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So it's for sake of not mixing up, it's very important that we distinguish with this. Yeah. Of course, mix it, people mix it up totally sometimes. He made Christ to know no sin to judicial be sin on our behalf, so that in Him we will become the righteousness of God. If you see the first part here, He made Christ to know sin to be sin on our behalf. 
you believe that? It's quite easy to believe that, isn't it? And most people, most preachers, they preach that and believe that. But the next part, what does that say? So that in Him we will become the righteousness of God. You believe that? Is it easy to believe that? Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, because I explained it, but it's not easy for many people to believe that, mm -hmm. that we have become the righteousness. It's easier, it's easier to believe that Jesus, mm -hmm. He became sin with our sin. That's easy. Mm -hmm. But when it says, as a consequence of this, now we have become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it? Mm -hmm. If we believe it, then we dare to declare it. Yeah. If we don't dare to declare it, we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. So if you increase, your faith, faith comes by hearing, so declare it more. Amen. Yeah. So when you feel unrighteous, that's the time for declaring yourself righteous. Yeah. When you feel the old nature, then you must declare on the righteousness of God. Because the enemy, he comes, oh, look at your old nature. Oh, yeah, it's so bad, even worse. Look at this, look at this, look at this. So what is happening is, if we focus on our old nature, it will grow. But when you focus on the righteousness of God, on the new nature, righteous nature in you, that will grow. Because that is solution. That will, that will strengthen you to overcome the sin nature. So, the question is, on whose behalf was Christ, Christ made sin? Yeah, uh -huh. so, uh, why was Christ made sin on our behalf? Why? Because he had none. Hmm? No, he was made sin. He was until he was made sin. He took our sins, so that means he had sin. But before that, before our sins were laid on him, he didn't have any sin. And that is why God can lay our sins on him, because he didn't have any sin, because he didn't did need to die for his own sins, or atone for his own sins. Yeah. So, uh, so, why was Christ made sin on our behalf? Everything is right, but read the Bible verse. So we can be acceptable. acceptable. So that we can become, the other is right, become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. That is being made acceptable to Him. That's the right, right, right relationship with Him. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now you can confess after me, soon finished, lift your right hand. I have a Bible some more, but you take this now. Christ, Christ, Christ became sin, became became sin, sin with, my sin, with my sin, so that I, so so that I should, be made, should be made the righteousness of God in the righteousness of God. I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God in, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus. I am, I am the, righteousness, the, righteousness, the righteousness, the righteousness, the righteousness of God. Jesus did become sin on our behalf sufficient to make us righteous, was it? Yes. It put us into right standing with the Father. It was not necessary, it's not necessary that something extra is added because He has done it. So, we became partakers in divine nature the moment we accept Christ, are born again, saved, and thereby become a part of God's family. I mentioned my, when I was saved, born again. The thing is that born again experience is going from life to death. So there is no tran there is no trans halfway there. Mm. Either you are spirit dead or you're spirit alive. Either you're born again or not born again. So but very often we don't know when it happens. Mm. I didn't know the exact date because I went I took a decision to follow Jesus. One week after I told my friends um, and one week after I received the Holy Spirit. So you know, I don't know exactly when I was born again, but it is like that. So people are either born again or not born again. When it comes to the expression salvation, that is uh, salvation experience in the form of born again is like this. What are other people can be saved of? We can be saved from the power of this world. We can be saved from sickness. You know. So Second Corinthians, no, uh, Ephesians 4:24, and to have put on the new man, having been. Having been, it's not going to be, having been created according to God in righteousness and holiness of truth. This is done. This is a new creation God made you to be. So, Ephesians 4.24, 24, 
and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. There's something to understand here that the sin nature, the old self, was taken out of our spirit when we were born again. Amen. So, but here is another biology, you understand? Amen. This is a sin to burn, it's still there. Yeah. So don't over-focus and don't preach yourself into the old nature. Amen. Focus on the new nature. Amen. So because when you focus on something, it will grow. And what will manifest is what you believe. Amen. If you be still believe that you are a sinner through and through, and then you don't have that sin, and you don't have, have divine nature, if you believe that, it's very difficult to live and experience the opposite. Mm -hmm. But when you believe that you are born again, that you are justified, you are made righteous, you receive a righteous new nature, he has made your righteous new creation. Amen. When you believe that, it starts to affect your experience. Amen. Amen. Can you see that? Amen. It's not that we believe this totally, and uh, just this, but it's like a balance with the right emphasis. Yeah? So, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, the old things have become new. Can you confess after me? I am in Christ. I am in Christ. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. All things have become new. James 5.16 Who is this righteous person? What can we dare to believe in? We know, of course, that if we were walking 100% in righteousness, then we would qualify. But there's not a person upon the face of the earth except Jesus has done that. Mm -hmm. So we will have them to fulfill the law. Because if we have broken one commandment, we have broken all. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. We think that we are reasonable good. No. We are Christ, we are not. So, uh, so, James 5.16, but be confessing your offenses one to another, and pray one for another to be healed. Amen. For the power of the prayer which a righteous person pray is great. Amen. And if in God's word translation, so admit your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you will be healed. Prayers offered by those you have God's approval are effective. Mm -hmm. So there was a Bible verse, we don't know if you read it, but it says somewhere mm -hmm. that it gives righteousness gives us God's approval. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. So that means that that who is this righteous person? You are that righteous person. Mm -hmm. So now because you are the righteous righteous because you have become the righteousness of God in Christ. So when you have become the righteousness of God in Christ, Christ, now you know the prayer of a righteous man, a righteous person, avails much. Amen. In a way, the Bible says, has strong, has a lot of strength in his power. Amen. Yeah, it's very powerful. And and what is the case? Here? When you discover that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, and you discover that you are this righteous person. Then you don't always need to get to others to be prayed for. Because Amen. your faith works. Amen. You understand? Because righteousness sets you free from condemnation when you approach the throne. You know you go straight in because you're not righteous without a spot or wrinkle. Mm -hmm. And that affects your faith tremendously. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to finish. the following is a huge need and a crucial importance. That is to know what we are in Christ. To know how the Father looks up at us in Christ. You know, if I look at myself, I don't look at, the, you know, I'm looking at my conduct now. So, things I do and say, if I look at myself, we always find things that look perfect. Mm -hmm. Don't look that good. Maybe people say to me, oh yeah, 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 but this is not true, now you should be according to God's standard. So, and when other people look at you, they will find some faults there, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and people say, oh, you look so good, you know, but that is true. <laughs> That's mean very much. So, because people say, oh, this guy, you know, he has this weakness here. Yes, he has this strength there as well, but he has this weakness there. And you remember that time when I was crazy. You know, and, 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 and. So, and the enemy, you know how he looks at you. He looks at you as the worst sin on the face of the earth. That's how, what he wants you to believe that you are. So, that means that outside of Christ, no one wants to look good. But we don't look at ourselves from that standpoint. We, you know, we look at ourselves the way God looks at us. Mm -hmm. You know the Bible was said in James, the several Bible was particularly one, 
He says about looking in the mirror. And that is easy to be betrayed. Because if you look in the mirror according to the principles of the law, you will see yourself bad. And so we think, we look in the mirror and we see all our dirt, and we forget it so we don't wash away our dirt. We go on and we say we don't do according to the word of God. That is not what he says. He says, but those who looks in, in the mirror, looks in to the law of freedom and continue doing so. They are a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Because when you look there, you see how you are, but you see how Jesus are, how you are in him. Amen. So we mustn't forget that. And then, when we start acting according, we walk in that light, then we are the doers of the word. Can you Amen. understand that? So it's not just a problem, there's the solution as well. But sometimes, for many years, I didn't read it properly. When I was surprised, even just a few weeks ago, I had heard it before, but you know. So, uh, yeah. Righteousness is a gift, not the fruit. We, sk we skip that one. I just give it Hebrews 10, 1 to 2. For the here it says freedom from sin consciousness. So you know that's there. Is it there? Hebrews 10, 1 to 2. New American Standard Bible. Is it on order? Yeah. For the law, since it has only a shadow of good things to come, and not the very form of things, can never, by the same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have a consciousness of sin. And then it says, God's Word translations, can you see that? It says, their consciences would have been free from sin. So it's the same thing. A conscience, free from sin, then you don't have sin consciousness. But it doesn't talk about, you know, when we are about to do something wrong and something here tells us this is sin. That is a good sin consciousness. That is different. We're not talking about that. So this is another... Here. So that means that the problem here that created... I'll just ask you a question. What made this problem here? What made the sin consciousness in this background here? What it talks about is that in the Old Testament they had to offer once a year. But now Jesus is sacrificed once for all. I and mean, you are purified once for all. You don't need a new purification. In this context here, before the fall. So, uh, what did I ask? Um, yeah, what was the reason? What created the sin consciousness, for these people, in the Old Testament, when they sacrificed each year? What did you say? The repetitive yeah, the repeated sacrifice. That is so strange. And uh, people have done the same thing in confession. I think, like in the Catholic Church, you, you, something similar. So, sin, confession of sin, should keep you, keep sin consciousness away from you, or at least remove it. But if confession of sins creates sin consciousness, mm. so. so Keep that in mind. So what was the case here? They have received forgiveness. They were so happy and blah, 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 you know, for the sacrifice. But then, next year, oh, you have to sacrifice. Yeah, but I thought, my sister, no, 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 all the sins you don't sins. So each year, they have this reminder over and over and over again. So when you come to Jesus, everything was taken away. And he's not going to die once more for it. You understand that? He's done once for all. And can you be more free from condemnation than that? No, so, that means you have admission straight to the throne of mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, now, stand up. Sorry, I went a little bit more time here. But you won't hear me preaching for a while. <laughs> I am in Christ. I am in Christ. I am. I am. The righteousness, the righteousness, the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, through Christ, through Christ, I, I am, am put, put into, into right standing, right standing, standing, right standing. Yeah.
children. With a righteous new nature. I am. I am. A righteous. A righteous. New creation. New creation. In Christ Jesus. Christ. In Christ.